Hello everyone. I'm glad to be here and to present my work on enabling secure learning for clean energy system. I'm Li Zhechen, currently a postdoc at Inter Integrate Data Framework Group from the Scientific Data Division. So in this talk, I would like to share some of my past and also some current endeavors by trying to apply machine learning to a secure and reliable energy infrastructures. So as everyone may already know, machine learning is quite awesome and it's progressing in a really fast pace these days. So what is a good machine learning algorithm for real engineering problems? And specifically, we are considering an engineering problem what will be your good properties. And in today's engineering scenarios, application scenarios, what could be the barriers for real practical machine algorithms considering all the physical system constraints and also the dynamics. And as maybe like this demand block has shown here, so for the real machine system, and we may want to let the agents, learning agents to take control well to solve many real world challenges. And this will be a final goal for the term AJF. And specifically today, I will talk about of my current application for some energy system and specifically um, electrical power systems. So for this large scale power grid, we definitely have two sets. So for supply side and for demand side. And as today's system is becoming more and more carbon neutral. There are more renewables integrated in the system. So from the supply side, we will have more stochastic signals coming from all the solar and wind generation. And we get all the measurements like sensor measurements and PMU measurements from all the supply as well as the demand side and design our control box to close the loop between system model and the control decision making. Well, for our current research on machine learning, people is really interested to say, can we automate this process from collecting all the data, doing data processing, to giving a robust and reliable decision making algorithm, say dispatching the power or getting the good scheduling for different renewable generations and such system can be stable and also supply and demand side will be balanced all the time. And machine can definitely help in many ways. For example, it can give you a better modeling about how the system set, say what will be happening given current data. And it can help you find a good decision, say the most economical or the most carbon, least carbon intensive solutions for supply and demand balance. And for our case here, we will talk maybe two parts. So first part, how can we design these kind of control boxes to make sure the decision itself is secure and also we have some benchmarking framework. And the second part, with regard to all the system uncertainties, how do we deal with that? And how can we make sure the decisions are robust against all stochastic scenarios and losses? And in today's talk, the first part, we will be firstly talking about how can we find a computational checkbook decisions and especially in terms of machine learning agents, how can we find such conditions? And in our framework, proposed framework, we propose a convex neural networks where it can help you find the optimal controllers. And for the second part, once we have some reliable, once we have some machine learning agents that can be given decisions, how can we make sure the given actions are actually reliable? For example, if you consider all the welfare risks, as well as climate change risks, how can we make sure the learning agents are still can make good decisions considering all, all of this kind of unseen scenario? And from an attacker set or from a negative set, we will show machine algorithm can give you some certain vulnerabilities. Well, from the other set, we can definitely design a safety layer based on our own knowledge about the physical system such that a physical informed machine algorithm can help you better design the algorithms. And so in this one, we specifically look into a building model where we look into a building energy model, which may consume a lot of energy. And now engineers come and may ask a question. So how can we reduce energy consumption for such a building system? 
And from a classical approach, we would definitely model center. So you need to set up model for the buildings and design the control loss based on the fund, fund models. But then now we we'll have been people proposing to say, we have all the measurements, say the different temperature measurements from different rooms, and you can get the power consumptions based on such measurements. So there will be a certain model. And if you have more and more data, so the thing will change because you can have better and accurate modeling using all the deep learning functioning techniques. And what is more important is that to take control. That is to say, if we have certain objectives, can we set the new set point, say the AC conditioner scheduling or the water pump, the scheduling problem by using other control objectives. And potentially neural networks could be a good model here because people have been always arguing that neural networks are universal function approximator. So you can approximate a lot of functions and maybe it's doing dynamics models. But another question raised is that these kind of neural networks are really hard to be used or to be applied in a closed loop system. And by closed loop, I mean the interactions between the system model and the decision making process. And one more problem, one more challenge for the neural network designer is that it's really hard to obey hard concept. Uh, think again, like the building models, say we want to find the people to feel comfortable within the group. So you have certain temperature or comfort zones constraints. But if you only use neural network to do the prediction, it's really hard to get the physical meanings about all the constraints here. And how can we solve that? And if we explicitly write all the problem, that is to say, we have certain objective for a certain time horizon, say we want to minimize the energy consumption so the next 24 hours. And you have the model, which we can definitely write out. Uh, we can fit the model within the neural network, where the next state, st plus one, is a function over your previous state and actions. And also you have certain observations, which is coming from the state of u, and let's denote that as an other parameterized function as f and n. But once that we mentioned, it's very hard to get a computationally tractable solution for this. And to cope with this kind of challenges between the function fitting using an accurate deep learning model and accurate control using some good model-based language, what we propose is to use an input output count neural network. And by replacing that with a neural network, this problem is solved reduced to a complex optimization framework, and we can always find the optimal solution for that. And how can we implement that? It's actually not that hard. So because the basic composition rule for complex functions, what we have done here is to just add a little bit more confidence over the function space of the neural network. And what we check is that for any functions with certain inputs that's called u, the output of the f function is a complex combination of the input. And this gave us design to different frameworks of neural network fitting. Either is a fully connected layer, just layer by layer structures with nonlinear relatives, or using some recurrent neural network to represent the temporal states. And with all these kind of function fitting techniques and the neural network design, we go back to the building simulations. And uh, we simulate a building using Energy Plus, which is a professional building environment software, where we can simulate any buildings under real weather data. So for this large top story building, what we found is that our proposed neural network controller design can get a good trade-off between the model accuracy, we mean to accurately predict the energy consumption, and also the control tractability, which we mean can find some good side points for the building, such as the energy consumption is also minimized. And here is a, a simple graph result showing that by using such neural network, we can reduce the most energy consumption throughout the weekdays. And one thing to mention is that uh, our neural network can also satisfy all the constraints. That means uh, in the modeling process, all the 
all the box content can be captured. And let's move on to our other topic. So we have been talking a lot about neural networks and people have been also arguing that uh, such deep learning methods may not be robust in voices. Then in computer vision, people have been arguing that a lot we can design the so-called adverse of examples, which is shown in the middle of the plot, where once you add the noise from the people's side, it still has a stop sign here. But for well-trained neural network, which is trained on clean data, it will classify it as a very wrong labels. And this raises a very natural question for real engineering problems. And specific for this energy system application, that is to say, if we want to model the power system or the electrical energy system using such neural networks, are there any threats of security in the loop? And essentially, are there any security breach on either the model set or the data set? And from the research set, the first step to say, can we construct such algorithms or attacks? And with such algorithms or attacks on the data set, are they causing any physical attacks? And how can we quantify the attack impacts brought by such machine learning loopholes? So in my previous research, we have been looking into two different kinds of attacks, both with machine learning involved, one for machine learning and one for reinforcement. So the first one is a quite classical forecast task where you try to focus the future demand. And remember the energy system task, you want to balance the supply and demand side. So if you have a wrong focus, so there will be some catastrophic efforts and also results. And what we show here is actually, if you can get some noises injection over the input speed, the output will be actually deviating a lot. And such attacks can cause adversarial effects to the grid operation. For example, making some economical loss or making the system focus on blackout behaviors. Well, on the other side, we look into a more detrimental attack where you have certain controllers are designed by data-driven controllers. And if we attack these kind of controllers, still we don't, we assume the attackers or the adversaries don't have the access to the specific parameters of the controllers, but we have some access to the data. And if we cautiously add this kind of noisy data to some adversary direction, what we find is that the action given by the data-driven controller will be also deviated. And if you sell, use such decisions into your system, say you're operating a grid, your voltage or frequency will be deviating a lot. For example, like 110 volts, this will not be hold anymore. So your grid will be going into some really bad behaviors. And for this kind of attack, we can actually, what we can actually do is to explicitly write out what will be the attacker's behaviors and what are the constant over the attacks. And we define two kinds of attacks Without any more explanation on the mathematical details, I will just brief the ideas here. So on the left side, the attack will be distorting the action, say compared to the accurate and also correct actions. By using the clean training data, I want to find some actions that are deviating a lot from such clean behaviors. Well, on the other side, on the right hand side, we simulate a case where the attackers can maliciously manipulate, many manipulate the grid. For example, driving the grid to certain adversarial states. So both attacks can have certain adversarial effects. Well, it's totally based upon the attacker's decisions to either affect the grid or to just affect the actions. And if we go to detail, details about this, so here are some simulation results where we show two kind, different kinds of control controllers. So the first one is called MPC, where you totally know the model, and you can just uh, get the decisions based on the model knowledge. Well, the second one, which is called PPO, the proximal policy optimization, mm -hmm. where you assume you have a learning agent, and the learning agent is telling you 
what to do for the future. And in this one, we have a, a predefined limit on the active power flow, which is a power flow through, through, and through, through the lens. And if you get a level much higher than the maximum lens flow, that will cause some issues due to the physical limits. And what we can see here is that if you only add around 50% of adversarial attack, adversarial noises over the input space, your output actions will cause the power flow to be deviating a lot. And this is really catastrophic behavior. And with regard to this kind of adversarial behaviors, we also want to take the perspective of the defenders of the system operators, because uh, in the real scenarios, we actually don't want the attackers to always achieve certain perfect threat. So with regard to this kind of uh, safety layer, what we propose to say, can we guard against this kind of attacks? Or can we guard against all the noises to make sure they're actually are safe and reliable? And by built upon the model knowledge about the system, where the voltage level and also power flow is an equation of your actions. And we can simulate the system, get the dynamics, and as a layer, as a one more layer to the system. And this one can actually make the voltage safe. So this one is actually a projection layer, where once you get an action from the reinforcing agent or different agent, you just project it back to the CC regions. And this one can give you the approval guarantee for both convergence and also optimality for the decisions. So, so far in this talk, we have been looking into the security and also reliability concerns when you are integrating machine learning to real engineering system. And I hope the knowledge and also the past experience we got from the power system and energy system are now constrained to the specific area because what we think is that physical knowledge and also physical modeling is always helping you to design better machine learning agents. And to consider all the system, we have proposed different modules and all the codes are actually, uh, most of them are public on GitHub, so you can take a look. And uh, here I just want to uh, yeah, say thanks to my uh, collaborators. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email and here is all the reference for the paper. And any questions will be really welcome. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.